This is a button that punches back when you push it. Gives you a little bit of a kickback action. How does it do that? Initially, during first part of the movement, a spring, this flat spring, bends around this point. And then once it triggers it, you're trying to bend the same spring against the tip of this screw. And you have a much shorter lever arm to work with right here. So the force is proportionally greater. And the spring gets to straighten. You can see straightening is converted into a kick upwards. This is inspired by a recent videos that a Veritasium, Veritasium has made about a mechanism that shrinks when you pull it. First, I created this um, Lego mechanism because hmm. it drops this. So, push on it, look carefully, and then it springs back by like more than half a stud. Here, the spring back action is uh, driven by the change in the length of the lever arm here. Initially, as you move it, the lever arm is between this point and this point, working against the torque, fixed torque created by this rubber band. So, and then once the toggle, once this point hits this bar, that buckles this uh, linkage and results in the bar being able free to move relatively and to push against this pin here. See? And the uh, lever arm becomes two times shorter. So, once again, you pull on it, then suddenly it snaps back with half a stud. And um, I drew a few diagrams to explain it better. So for regular button, like on a mouse, if you push on it, then suddenly goes much easier. Uh, how does that work? You, if we plot on x-axis uh, displacement, how far we push against the button, on the y-axis the force, how hard the button is pushing against us. So as we apply more and more force, if we get to the trip point, the force suddenly decreases. And um, uh, then we could um, usually continue up a little bit, but then we can get back to the reset point and go back in a loop. What does a counter snapping button do? It does something quite different. A force is increasing like that, and suddenly it jumps up, which sounds like something that shouldn't even be possible. And it rapidly decreases here, and um, as you move back, and then it slowly goes back to zero. Note that this point has to be below the curve, because the area right here has to be equal to the area under this triangle. So the area here has to be equal or smaller than the area here. Uh, it could be smaller if we are losing energy on our clicking, of course. So once again, see the counter snapping button if it still works because it's a little temperamental for now. Yeah, push on it and it suddenly springs uh, back. And if it does not quite spring back, then I can adjust this screw to come in contact with this sooner. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to make um, a keyboard button like that. And um, I mean, it's still quite a bit bigger than it needs to be. But I think I can make out of these three parts, one, two, and three. I think I can make them out of one single piece of metal. I would, like a spring steel, I would make uh, this bar out of spring steel and in this part of it, 
I would cut out a little strip down the middle to here. So I would bend it down uh, to replace those two links in the spring. And um, the bent down part could be bent in profile, sort of like that. Uh, kind of like um, like a measuring tape. Now, if you ever push it, as, as you mentioned, so this is measuring tape sticking up, you push it down on it, uh, you can push down up to a certain point and then it would buckle. So that would replace this buckling action that they have with this two bar linkage. So, yeah, I think I'll be able to eventually create counter snapping buttons. I don't know that they are necessarily a great thing um, uh, for typing, but they definitely feel very unique. And as far as like impact goes, I thought about it a bit. And usually what happens with a normal snap button is you go up, then so they snap down, but your finger is applying the same force. So you sh overshoot and you hit the limit where the force suddenly goes up. And it doesn't go back down like it does here. It just goes up and then back down again. So you do have an impact here. You have a click here and a click there. And uh, I think with a counter snapping button, you eliminate this whole over travel completely. You just do the click right here and get it over with to return back. So I think that might be slightly advantageous. Plus there might be also two other uses for this kind of mechanism. But yeah, uh, like and subscribe or not subscribe. Um, I'm not big for promoting subscribing anyway. So yeah, I guess I'll better show the legging mechanism again to, because it's so much easier to see on a big mechanism. Like see, push, push, push. And then suddenly jumps back by a whole half a step. Whereas with normal button, I would get to the point and then it would flip and I would go forward uh, several steps and then hit the limit. So I think, um, and note by the way that like if I were doing electrical contacts, I can have a contact here, a contact here, like in a regular mi micro switch. In fact, uh, this is uh, really similar to a micro switch, except it's like, it's non teasable in this direction, but it is teasable in the back direction. So yeah, it's uh, a thing. I'll be making more videos. Maybe I'll make a game. I promise it, but I didn't do it. Uh, a build video for this. I made a few improvements since the last video I made of that because like I replaced a normal uh, Lego beam with this because this is much stiffer and that actually improved a lot the counter snapping distance. So you could also use uh, old style technique par like or beam. Old style technique beam is also a lot stiffer than this kind of technique beam. So, yeah, you can watch my other video, my other video about this um, legging mechanism where I explain it in a bit bigger depth. And you definitely should watch Veritasium video if you haven't already about the mechanisms that shrinks when you pull it, because it explains the concept a lot better than I do here. Anyway, see you later and for the next time.